Hello? Hi. Hey, folks. We just asked that if you could move closer to this lit area. We'd love to see all your faces. This is going to be a very, hopefully, communal, interactive session. So we just want get to get to know everyone and see everyone. So if you wouldn't mind moving towards the light, we'd really appreciate it. <laughs> Please move towards the light, and if you, um, you should be filling out a survey if you have not already. If you need a survey, could you please raise your hand, and we'll get one to you. Everyone good with the surveys? Awesome. And please feel free to bring it forward or flag down Marie here at the center when you are done.
Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to uh, the uh, session, Home Here, There, Where, Mining the Gap and Bridging It. Um, and we're about to, we're, we're starting right now. Okay. I'll take the ball now. Yes, yes thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so we're just gonna do some quick introductions. We're gonna ask everyone to say your name, the organization you're with, and where you're from. It should be very quick. Again, your name, the organization you're from, and uh, where, you're f uh, where you're from, okay? Hi there, I'm Lillian Osai Boateng with the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation and we're in New York, New York. Uh, my name is Mei Li Yang. I'm an independent artist, but I started a company called Lazy Hmong Woman Productions. I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. Hi, it's Alain Cloarec. I'm with All for the Arts NYC. I'm a filmmaker and uh, acting teacher from New York City. I'm Jin Li. I'm a PhD student at UGA. And Aston? Georgia. <laughs> I'm Tracy Katokidiyama from Los Angeles. I live in Gardena. I'm with a project called Pull Project Ensemble. I'm Jeannie Sakata. I'm uh, from Los Angeles, actor and playwright. I worked a lot with East West Players. Hello, I'm Kata Vasco. I'm from San Francisco. I work full time as a production manager for You Speaks, and I'm also an artist, and I run my own independent theater company in San Francisco. Hi, I'm Meena Natarajan. I'm from Pangea World Theatre in Minneapolis, and I'm originally from India. And uh, I'm also a playwright and director. Hi, I'm Sharifa Joka. I'm from Los Angeles, and I work at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Hi, I'm Tim Dang. I'm from East West Players from Los Angeles. Hi, I'm Claro de los Reyes. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and uh, I guess I'm here representing Leviathan Lab. I'm a teaching artist and an actor as well. Hello, I'm Jorge Ortol with My You Care Company, New York City, originally from the Philippines. Hi, I'm Jane Jung with 2G and Ping Chong and Company, and I live in New York. Uh, Emilia Cachaparro, Theater Communications Group, New York from San Francisco. Hi, I'm Sydney Chen. I, I guess I can call myself a freelancer because I'm a high school student right now, and I'm from Philly. I, I'm Marie Ren Velez uh, from Los Angeles, Downey, California, and uh, I work. Oh, okay, I'm a, I'm a rep three people, three organizations. I'm with USC and Theater Productions and Artists at Play. Hi, I'm Julia Cho, uh, not the playwright. I am an actor and a, a fellow producing partner with Marie here uh, one, as one of the founding members of Artists at Play based in Los Angeles. Hi, everybody. My name is Candace Feldman. I'm with 651 Arts in Brooklyn. Hey, Brooklyn. Um, <laughs> I'm a rich, I grew up in Kansas, and I'm based in Brooklyn. Hey, everybody. I'm Victor Mayog. I'm artistic director of 2G in New York. Okay, um, well thank you all so much for joining us uh, for Minding the Gap and Bridging It, tagline, intergenerational six partnership and succession in Asian American theater. Uh, a brief overview of how this even came about. There was, uh, there was an API panel at the TCG National Conference that happened a few months ago, and uh, there was a comment made about the younger, newer generation of theater makers and how we're maybe not as, our, our, our organizational and activism skills were questioned, to be fair. Uh, and so this, this kind of came from that. And I actually have to credit Mia Katikbak, who was very supportive in her response. And the title of our session actually comes from her. Um, and the structure of this session we have planned for you today comes from a next-gen leadership panel at TCG um, that Marie attended that was facilitated by Candace here. So um, briefly, we're just gonna go over some stuff, but eventually we will break into smaller groups where hopefully all of us will have a chance to uh, speak and contribute to these conversations. Um, so, okay, so, so the goals for today um, are to uh, have open, transparent discussions about ideas of succession, um, what are the next generate, what are, what are the needs of the next generation of leaders, um, and also like what, what are practices um, 
in terms of uh, w and our, in, in terms of like a work organizational skills and also what 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 are the what what are the systems that are working for younger theater makers in in the Asian American community? Um, so. Yes, okay, and um, <laughs> sorry, I tend to get really awkward when I realize everyone's listening to me. So, um, <laughs> and, uh, and so, okay, so, so we, we do have uh, four, four discussions set up for everyone. And, um, and so uh, Victor will be leading a discussion um, it, briefly um, about, um, yes, okay, so, so we'll, we'll go over what we're gonna talk about. Yeah. Okay. So mine's called participation. Uh, do, do I belong here? Right? Uh, and so what the question is, for myself, I've been participating in sort of in the education realm and in, in more mainstream theater. And this is my first kata conference. And also, I'm just trying to get to know what the Asian American field is. And uh, I, in my two years at 2G, I've been noticing a lot of folks telling, to, uh, telling me, hey, Victor, you know, this is my first time at uh, an Asian American company, though they've been going to grad school, doing significant things. On some level, they said to me, I've, I was never invited and I didn't feel welcome. And so how do we begin to have that conversation? Why do people not feel like they can participate? Why do people not necessarily want to stay? You know, what's the value of that? Um, so that's part of what that group is uh, for me. Uh, participation, do I belong here? Great, and I will be facilitating uh, the conversation on succession. Are you ready? Who's ready? Um, and basically that is a question that's been coming up a lot lately. Last year when I was at an NPN conference, one of the uh, main discussions was there were leaders that were in position that were ready to move on and, and transition out of their leadership role, but they didn't know how to pass on the torch. And then there was a re response from people in my generation or in that next generation that would be moving up into that uh, position that said, well, we're not ready because we didn't know that you were planning on <laughs> leaving. So there's this gap that is happening and how do you prepare? And if you are part of a younger generation, that wants to accept that role, how do you start articulating that and positioning yourself? And if you are a leader, an executive director, or someone of that level that is planning on trans transitioning out, how do you prepare the person coming up afterwards? So that's what we'll be talking about. Um, I will be leading the discussion on burnout and sustainability. Burnout, pretty self-explanatory. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, how do we, how do we keep doing what we do without completely exhausting ourselves to the point where we question whether we want to keep doing this? And sustainability, I think that applies to um, our audiences, yes, uh, as theater makers, but also uh, sustainability and leadership and administration. Just you know, keeping that fire burning, uh, not just, not only for our community, for those of us creating the work, creating the art, how do we, how do we just keep that, keep that energy and, and, and desire and passion um, sustain us? Thank you. And I will be leading a discussion about, I will be uh, facilitating the, a, a discussion about cross-cultural systems and affinity. Um, we actually had a conversation a couple weeks ago uh, about, about this session and what, what, what are the is issues that are, that we really wanted to talk about. What are the questions that we have for other people in our field? And one of the sort of trends or at least practices that we have noticed is that um, as, as younger leaders um, or younger emerging leaders that, uh, that there is a lot of uh, coalition building across uh, different communities um, within theater and also outside of theater. And so uh, why, why is that? Um, what are the obstacles in terms of what in terms of seeking help with resources within our Asian American theater community and also what, what are the needs? Um, and and how and how we can come together to help each other. Um, okay, so Candace. Great. So now we're just gonna 
talk as a collective about just some ground rules and making the space feel safe for everyone. And so I just wanted to throw out some things and then of course I want to open it up to anybody else that has some rules that they think would be good for our time together. One of them is that this is a safe space so every person's words matter. And that if we can just agree that everyone's voice is important, everyone, everyone's words or thoughts are important and that there isn't a judgment here and that it is okay to disagree but not to condemn people for believing or feeling the way they are. Can I just get a nod from everybody that we agree? Yes, good, that's one of the rules. Other, other rules is that it's okay to step out if you feel like you need to take a, a minute. Um, sometimes we get really heated in our conversations and instead of engaging into something that might become explosive, that it's okay to take a breath and it's okay to say, I'm feeling unsafe. So if you feel that conversations are going down to a, a road that makes you uncomfortable or are, you feel being questioned about your own self or identity, um, it's okay to say, I'm feeling unsafe and that we can respect that. Can I get a nod that we agreed to this? And then the last thing is, this uh, group is really about how you identify and how you identify in your own environments, whether it's work, artistically on the stage, um, in your own career as a writer, as an artist, as an administrator. And so it's not how I will identify you, but how you identify yourself and that we are not here to make I, um, assumptions on people um, or what we think that they should be. So if I could just get that nod one last time, great. Is there anybody else that wants to suggest um, just a ground rule for this space. No? Oh, I love you guys. Good. So now we're just going to take a moment before we break out into our sessions. Each facilitated session, we're going to have a lot of time to really get down into these guided conversations. We're going to have 30 minutes. That's a really beautiful amount of time to start, one, warming up to each other, trusting each other, but to really hit on some of the important um, aspects of each conversation, um, and you can go to whichever one you want, but just realize that you know we do want to walk away with action items. It's just it's not a conversation about I feel really blah, blah, blah. no. It's um, this is what's going on. How do I change it? This is what's happening. How do I start the conversation? So. There's 30 minutes to do that, but before we break out into those sessions, I just want us to all stand up together. And I, I'd like us to come in so at least that there's just a little bit of space in between our shoulders. Yes, yes. And I just want us to take a good look around each other, and I'm going to actually have to drop the mic, sorry. We will all reconvene at the end, so don't feel like you're missing out on any one topic. We will all get together and share our thoughts at the very end. So we have Victor with participation at the far corner. We have Candice with succession. Me here with burnout sustainability. And Marie with cross-cultural systems. So feel free to grab a chair, choose a group, and take a seat, folks. And we do want these groups as even, evenly numbered as possible, just to keep the discussion time pretty even. So don't feel like you're missing out on any one topic. We will all gather together. <laughs> no, here, take a seat. Join me. 
So Victor with participation, Candice with succession, burnout sustainability with me, Julia, and Marie, cross-cultural systems. Gather around, gather around.
do you want to be up there? Hello? Hi, hey, folks, we're going to bring these small group discussions to an end now. Um, do we want to gather in the front or do we want to review in our respective stations? Can we circle back, folks, into the original large circle? Thank you all so much, everyone. Let's all reconvene. Let us all reconvene into the light. <laughs> Come to the light! So we can share all our new knowledge with everyone. Folks in the back. Actually, Victor, um, if you want to stay there and re or it, whatever you're comfortable with, if you want to report back to us, <laughs> I'll bring you the mic. Okay. Okay. I get. Hi. Okay, so um, I'm going to bring this microphone over to Victor so he can report out from his group, but I'm also going to pass around an email list. Um, I forgot to print one out. So, um, so, so that we can also all get a report out of today's session so we have what are the next steps and, um, and everything that we have discussed. Hi, everybody. Um, could my group just raise their hands, please, and just... It's a mighty little uh, team, actually quite international. Um, and what I found ironic about the group was I thought, well, there's no other sort of uh, uh, Americans, right, who had come in and participated in this. And I thought, well, maybe they're just not here. So I find that ironic. Participation, do I belong here? So part of the question that we had was what are some of the blocks and I don't, I don't know how much time do, we, do I have. Uh, five minutes. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so we just talked about the blocks, things that may, maybe uh, would prevent people from participating in Asian American theater. Uh, one, of it, one of the things are th of the identities, that it's splintered, that you don't want, you maybe you're not interested in one particular sect that it's inward looking, it's work that hasn't traveled, people, it hasn't, the reach, the reach of the work is maybe has not gone beyond that particular city or to different countries. The other bit is, of course, like money. The profile, if you're gonna be subsidizing theater anyway and doing theater, the money's not there. You don't, the spotlight's not quite big enough. And there's not an industry influence, right? Industry power. And sometimes there is, one we're speculating, maybe a bias towards the work. Maybe these are things that you already know and understand. Um, and if perhaps if people were doing this work, they would think of them limiting themselves. So if they're going to do this sort of uh, work in theater anyway, why not go in a, on a platform that doesn't necessarily frame them? Um, and the question of who's limiting them. It, it could be like a white person's image of theater, like you're meant to be in this box. Uh, and there's, and frankly, they think uh, there could be lack of opportunities and just invisibility, like this is work that no one pays attention to anyway. So those are some of the, the blocks. Uh, in terms of closing in the gaps, we think about how do we find a way to actually serve each other, right? The seemingly disparate groups, how do we begin to lift each other up? Um, how do we identify outward-looking practitioners and funders with passion? How do we find those folks who are actually activating, putting money in, uh, pulling the trigger on some things and have some skin in the game? The intent to create names uh, for, I guess part of it was how do we, how do we have uh, a theater community that with more recognizable names instead of just a few? How, and is there a strategy for that? Other other communities have had that. Can we connect, uh, build the reach of the theater by connecting the internet uh, with the theater to widen the scope, right? So it's not just a, a limited place. Can we begin to be more inventive with that? And 
exploring the root culture. Maybe you can just explain what uh, the root culture is. If you go to anywhere in Asia, so things like uh, the Philippines, uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, etc., Tokyo, you see the huge presence of uh, song, music, popular culture, uh, you know, journalism, in, and the, so you know. So that so I think that uh, uh, theatre makers, theatre is just bursting in Hong Kong, bursting in Singapore, uh, uh, you know, and there's that energy there. Why uh, can we connect to that? I, I, that's that's the point of exploring one's root culture. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Up next, we have Candice and Succession. Hey, everybody. Okay. Where's my group? Throw up those hands. Woo woo! They were awesome. We're gonna do this, and we're gonna do this fast. Okay. So. We have a lot, <laughs> a lot of fine print, because that's how hard we worked. We had identified four questions that we wanted to talk about. Um, unfortunately, we only dissected two of them because that's how deep it got. So w number one was how to remove fear from the equation. What is the torch? Right, that's so deep. Um, legacy change, transition, or lack thereof. And so we tackled fear as the first one, and then we took out, you know, what's next? If you're the person in leadership, what are um, some of the things that you are preparing for? Pensions, um, transitioning into a, a consultant tor uh, type of position, financial planning. Is the organization that you are you know, leaving in a, a healthy place? You know, all these things to help, help you move on. Um, also, which kind of helped with number two, which is what the organization, cash reserves, that that sort of number one and two are concurrent, they're on the same plane. Um, then we really went into um, how to communicate interest. If you are interested in being part of the succession plan, if you are interested in taking on that leader positionship, how do you open up that conversation? Um, and the burden of that responsibility of moving into that leadership. Are you, do you feel you're in a place that you can rise to that? And some of the things that we talked about that were, were good steps to take is mentorship. Mentoring is the number one important thing that came out of this. And finding a mentor isn't about um, force. It's an organic thing. Um, you have to be open to the fact that the timeline might vary, um, to be ready to be honest and vulnerable, that it's reciprocal. And when you're looking for a mentor, looking for someone that has a similar career path, values, and that you can have an authentic relationship with. Um, then, identify a mentor, transition committee, okay. And then we talked about um, this responsibility and the burden and being prepared and starting with maybe a self-assessment of yourself. Um, what's your story? What do you know about your skill set? Where do you need to work on it more? And then finding opportunities to get training, going to conferences, you know, opening yourself in and, and educating yourself, but also having places that have funding for that. There's plenty of leadership, um, APAP, Leadership U, uh, there's so many of them, and, and putting yourself out there and learning and growing and talking to your boss about them. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Staff grants, oh, having organizations that have staff grants, have development, uh, professional development opportunities for your staff. You know, this is about people that are already in leadership, identifying leaders that are coming up and how to nurture them and, and get them prepared. It's a two-way road. You gotta be interested, you gotta be ready to do the work, and then you've also gotta invest in those people. Okay, um, moving forward. Oh, and for mentors, uh, this I just really like this quote. Every single word you are saying is being listened to. You see that? That's serious. Okay. Um, then, because we only had five minutes left, thank you, Marie, we, d we decided that we couldn't tackle some of the other ones, so we just wanted to identify what the torch was. And the torch is interchangeable. 
the torch could be your torch, and when you pass it down, it could change. It could be somebody else's. Not having to say, you know, this is my torch, I'm giving it to you, and it cannot change. But understanding the vision, um, having your own vision. Um, where am I? Oh, being honest about the torch, if you are passing it down, knowing what you're leaving that person and what they're you know, being, um, going to take on. Building in time for an interim person, that's important, you need to do that. Um, overall flexibility, um, again, doesn't have to be the same torch. And if you are a next generation person and you really want to, ooh, Marie, you set an alarm? Last thought, last thought. Okay, if, <laughs> if you are someone in the next generation and you do want to, you know, open up that conversation about being a next uh, person to, to be considered for that position, um, bef before you ask for that support, um, know, that y know your foundation. Is it strong enough to start having that conversation? Um, do you share in the same goals of the organization? Um, know your truth. Be ready for an honest answer. Uh, one of the things we talked about is if you're going to be like, hey, I'm thinking about, you know, this, and if you have a feeling that your, you know, leader might be like, no, 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 maybe now is not the time to ask. Maybe start, you know, working towards positioning yourself. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Go group. <laughs> Woo. Okay, Julia with burnout and so sustainability. Um, so I, uh, a lot of our conversation came from how, how we all got involved in theater in the first place, as difficult as it is, as challenging as it is, as it is why are we here and why do we do what we do? Um, so as, as Jane Jung pointed out, our conversation kind of took an interesting trajectory and we always can, kind of came back to why, remembering why why we are here, why we choose to do what we do, as difficult as it is. And I think part of that sustainability, part of what keeps us here is continuing to ask that question. Because I think there's something about the why that brought us all into this line of work in the first place. And I think that's the why is what's going to help keep us here. Um, and also the why in bringing new people into the fold. Um, so uh, that was just a great kind of nucleus to kind of come back to. Uh, some of the stuff that we also went over. Um, part of the why, there's so much personal, there's so much of the personal that comes in, into the professional in what we do. We can't help it, it's just, it's just art. And um, we can't help but have our personal selves be intertwined and be such an innate part of the work that cre we create, the work that we help bring to fruition. Um, what was interesting was that Emily brought uh, a very, very fascinating uh, parallel of how um, the work that we put into the arts is similar to the uh, energy that one puts into parenting. I think as I, I, uh, some of you may relate to. Um, <laughs> I definitely relate to in terms of artists at play. We spend one entire year bring t bringing this show to life. And there is something about investing all that passion and energy into this kind of one entity. And at the end, we're like, we did it. It's alive and like never again. But then there's something so beautiful about the work you create that the cycle continues. Um, I think working with, uh, working with like-minded people, like-minded colleagues with similar uh, personal, um, uh, the similar work ethics, similar artistic sensibilities was something important that came up because those, that will be your support group um, when, you, when you inevitably come across challenges and struggles and hardships. Those people that you choose to work with are gonna get you through it because they're in the same boat. Um, Strong leadership came into play. Working with, working for, working as a strong leader. Um, something, you know, the civil discourse in, in, a, in a world, in a society now where emails are so, um, so much easier, right? Uh, just texting, what have you. But um, going back to that in-person, interpersonal connection, which I think is also part of the work that we do in terms of touching people in a way that not all I don't think any other profession can. 
um, again, part of the why. Uh, and what's interesting, and it needs segue into the cross-cultural systems, perhaps another way of um, maintaining, uh, working towards sustainability, having a more diverse team, having a more diverse group of people that you work with, um, who can bring in different skill sets, who can fill in the holes that maybe you cannot, um, with different backgrounds, uh, the people who can be there for you to maybe pick up the slack, or uh, the people who will understand what you're going through and will help hold you up when when you are when you are down, <laughs> because we are very we can be down in the dumps in the work that we do, um, and also keeping in mind the perspective of the audience, because again, theater what we do is meant to be shared. Um, it's, it's, this is not a solitary field. Um, there's so, I mean, those of us here in the room, the people that we work with, um, our, our own kind of personal, um, I guess, uh, constellation of friends, family, colleagues. Let them know what you're going through because not everyone understands what it's like to work in the arts, to work in theater, how much of the personal is intertwined with the work. Let them try to maybe explain it to them so they can understand how, how difficult it is in different ways and what different challenges we face as artists and art, um, art arts administrators and arts practitioners. Awesome, thank you, Julia. Okay, so my team, raise your hand, because you guys were great, oh my god. Okay, so um, so we talked about cross-cultural systems and affinity, but it, it covered, we actually covered a lot. So um, so first I got um, a, sur a survey of who, who, we, you know, who, who was in our group and what their experiences were working um, outside of their own communities. And so uh, we have um, people working in like mentor-mentee relationships, also community partners, with uh, service organizations, LGBT communities, immigration policymakers, um, uh, also like uh, regional collaborations, um, Latino community um, community partners, um, and uh, like all for development of plays. Um, also, in terms of education and what um, and working cross -cul culturally within a staff, and um, and then also intergenerational uh, collaboration and partners. So, so that's who we were with. Um, and then, uh, so I asked the question about what are the obstacles? Like, what what is like what is keeping people from getting what they need, or at least like what what is um, holding you back? And so we had um, people being afraid to ask for help, but then learning quickly that should not be afraid to ask for help. Um, and then also um, not knowing what specifically to ask for, thinking beyond the, a uh, the Asian American community, um, also thinking about timetables. Um, with a lot of community organizations, they do need, a, they, they do need more than a couple weeks or at least, uh, or, or more than a month to be able to organize um, and create a, 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 a timeline of a plan to get people to come to a show, be involved. Um, and then also there was a question of manpower, like capacity, um, you know, access to space, uh, uh, time and money in terms of development of plays, uh, and then uh, realizing uh, that, that there is a need to build, to, to build a community. Like what is the time involved with that? So, um, and then we had uh, really great stuff like in terms of bias of representation being, being an obstacle, um, being under-resourced, also facing ignorance within, with, with, with other communities. Um, so so there, there was a wide range of obstacles that we were facing. And so then I asked the question of how can we help each other within, within this community, within this, and then also like within our national community. And so, um, so there, this, uh, this was a really great part. This is my favorite part. Okay, so we had, um, so then um, uh, May Lee Yang talked about uh, transparent process. So how, like being really transparent about what, what your process is. Um, are, you know, and then that, that, that going into artist exchange, um, the, the idea of a touring writing lab came about, um, and then also utilizing um, intergenerational dialogue to learn about different models, to better assess what models are working well. Um, and then uh, Tracy asked about if Kata has a resource guide of what are the programs that all of the organizations involved with Kata offer. And no, there isn't one. So we should 
this, this, is a, this, this is a task. This is a very tangible task. And so we have, so we have this as, as, as something to do um, to have an organized resource guide for what everyone has to offer. I think that'll help just um, build in terms of pu publicity, visibility, and then also to, um, and, uh, it, it's, it's an outreach tool. Um, and then, um, so then speaking of that, there's the publicity and marketing of Kata as, as a network, as a national network, um, to make sure that all Asian American artists know about, about this right here and what we do, and so that in two years it'll be a bigger conference so we have more to share. Um, tapping into the national network of arts presenters. Um, so there are a lot of individual artists who do tour their work, and so it's it, that, so, and so to know who exactly, who exactly is presenting work, to know which, which colleges um, and communities outside of the major cities uh, bring in artists. And so then there was also a question about like, well, that also brings up comp the, the question of competition. A lot of artists don't want to share um, their list of presenters that they always tour with. But then also, uh, Tracy brought up a really great point about like, well, what if I had a list of top five presenters and then I asked someone else to, put a, to make up a list of their top five presenters. And then individual artists and, and, art and independent artists can have the power to have their top lists. And then presenters can compete you know, and that and that puts presenters in a great comp co competitive um, field, um, and so to um, and so that came into like thinking about the long game. Ha! Ah, okay, and then uh, <laughs> and then also like thinking about like smaller convenings. Okay, to think about like smaller convenings and and to have like sorry you went has and then to <laughs> uh, <laughs> and to have like um, working conference calls um, like to like quarterly on a quarterly basis so that you know like all of this all of these tasks right here that we can actually get them done if we meet more often and to actually like set aside three hours every three months to to get it done. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I, we, we did want to open this up. Um, we're, we're, at, we're at six o'clock, but we did want to open this up if anyone has any, any urgent points to bring up uh, for a group that they did not participate in. Awesome. <laughs> yes, Amelia. Uh, 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 to try to address it. And then uh, also in terms of uh, burnout, really important to find ways of renewal, uh, which is essential. Uh, and I think um, my, I have a lot of different thoughts that I'm trying to cram into like a Reader's Digest version. Um, <laughs> really important that your personal goals align with the organizational goals because that, is, that disconnect can learn to burn out if you, there is not a right fit between where you spend your daily life, your work situation, and the organization. That's huge. Uh, but also really important to find the reflection time, that time away, the time not at our jobs. We all, too many of us, work 24-7. And to say it's OK to step away and just take a walk, step away and buy ice cream, step away and whatever it is to build that in. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I just had a quick question. More for the, the, the group that is in the succession group, and I, I noticed it was like, you know, the leaders in the field, look, you know, and, and I was wondering how you felt that there was no next-gen folks joining you in the conversation. Candace. Oh, besides Candace. Candace is moderating, but I'm saying to, to, to be part of the conversation in, in this. I, I almost left my group. I just, you know. <laughs> oh, next gen. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. <laughs> yes. But I think that's important that as. Um, maybe someone younger, and I'll, I'll say, because um, I, I, as a facilitator, it was a little daunting myself to have what I felt were very experienced people, and I'm leading 
or facilitating this conversation. So I am, I just want to go ahead and throw that out to um, my group, you know, what did it feel like? I think that that's something I'm used to in my organization. Like I said, uh, one of the practices is, the, uh, an active practice is to have everybody facilitate. Mm. So it's really, you know, it's part of the practice that people, you know, build leadership in that way. So maybe this bounces off to the qu question that I had actually for that group was, in terms of succession and leadership, uh, I know it's, it's, folks have different models of leadership. If there was a, a conversation on exactly that, uh, in terms of sustainability, um, you know, there are definitely dominant, the do dominant models of leadership and how people succeed, like take the throne, for lack of a better metaphor. Um, but you know, is there like, ro is there, a com there are companies who rotate leadership in a yearly basis and, um, and so, you know, certain sort of qualms in that dominant model is probably already being addressed through, you know, um, you know, building up that capacity for say one year this, or two years this person is leading and so they have that capacity while at the same time two years later another person gets it. Um, I was wondering if there was a, a conversation on that. I don't know, like the different models of, of I think that's more like an ensemble based uh, mm -hmm. model and, um, and it's, a, it's an interesting model to, to think about and especially as uh, 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 I, yeah I'm, I have I really uh, I have to think about that a little okay. bit more yeah. You guys are popular for this <laughs> succession <laughs> group. <laughs> but I'm, I'm very interested in the question uh, about the torch and defining the torch and um, what it might look like for another artistic leader coming. So I was wondering if you could just elaborate on that a little more, the discussion that you had. Oh, no, it was, um, it was Lillian. It up, but oh. you about yeah, we just talked about the, the leader who is passing on the torch, giving the newer person a little more freedom to kind of define the torch for themselves, give them permission to have their own failures, ask the questions they need to ask, and let them know that it's okay for their torch not to be the same <laughs> as the previous person's. I think that's really important. And I think it's hard for some of those leaders going out to let go of the tor torch and to accept that it might be different from what they created. Just to piggyback on that, I think um, we also broach the topic of self-assessment. You know, what what am I what am I capable of, and uh, being allowed that time to be able to really kind of uh, assess that for yourself, and also on the other end, allowing this new person or maybe uh, uh, an outsider um, before as you bring them into the fold, you know, allow them the time. Um, even though you know we're all on the go, we're all trying to make art happen, there's so much that we need to get done, there's so much we need to check off our list, but allowing these, uh, you know, allowing our colleagues, um, maybe newer folks, uh, yeah, allowing them to as assess, like, wh what am I capable of? What are my strengths and weaknesses? What can I bring to the table? And then being able to work with them uh, after they've, they've realized that for themselves, perhaps. I'd love to pose a question that's between this one and that kind of connects the, these two, which is that I feel like as, as a nonprofit, as, as a leader of an organization, I've often found that we really like nurture, train, um, build people up. And of course, it's, it's a natural organic process um, to, 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 to really be, um, uh, to, to lead. And then what happens is that they leave and go and join the for-profit. Very often, I mean, I feel like, and I feel like this is like the underbelly of a conversation that I've had with so many leaders across the country, that people who leave the field, like you're, we're basically nurturing people for the, for, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm like, I, I just don't know. Or, or we nurture people for larger organizations. So they go through the smaller organizations, they get trained, they get really, and, and then when you're kind of like saying, okay, let's get to the next step or whatever it is, but they're gone to a larger nonprofit because they get more money in that nonprofit. So I feel like it's a, it's a really important question for our field. How do you sustain? You just hit on it because I think um, 
our organizations uh, overall within um, culturally specific organizations need, uh, people need to be paid what they are worth. <laughs> and uh, people over in, all in our field are not paid what they are worth. Uh, and so that's a systemic issue, and I think we all, everyone who's a leader, needs to figure out a way to make that happen. Uh, I will never bring on... But it's having a strong relationship with the advocates in your community. I mean, that's where the board and who you're reaching out to, your community liaisons, your community partners, essential, essential. You can't function in a vacuum in that way. Uh, I think uh, the point I want to make about secession is that, you know, I I've been an artistic director myself in the UK for two years and being with that cohort. And the, the other side of the coin is that, you know, there's a certain sense of one, one chooses to do that is, is, one, is a sense of service and almost sacrifice of one's personal life, one's, uh, you know, al almost friendships somehow, you know. It's so hard for me personally to maintain my friendships of actors in the UK the moment I became an artistic director. It's very, it was one of the most lonely experiences I've had. Uh, and I think that, um, so, you know, so, so it's not everybody's cut out. It's a calling, if anything, you know, and very, very few people seem to be cut out for this level of calling and this level of having to say no to so many people. I think it's probably managing expectations and saying no is probably the majority. So I think that there's something around, um, there's something around that side, I think. The other, the other point about uh, people moving on, I think that's a good thing. It's about retaining the talent to sustain things, but I do think that moving people on to the full profit, that's great. Uh, if you can tell me who are the people have moved on to Broadway uh, and uh, to, you know, to, to create uh, massive successes, we know David Henry Huang, but if there are more, I'd love to hear, maybe can I have a chat to you about these people that have moved on. Um, because I think that they, they, uh, there's, there's the people that will move on, but there's the people that will always have their foot in more than one camp. So someone David Henry Huang is a wonderful uh, example, advocate, uh, an example, someone that has the foot in the for-profit camp and a not-for-profit, you know. So I think those are my two uh, reflections. Uh, just, I think also that um, organizations have to welcome people to come back. Uh, that I think it's, it shouldn't be a given that once they cross to the dark side, they're never going <laughs> to come back. But in, in essence, there are connections, relationships, um, I mean, you know, lots of resources, and there's not, I've talked to a lot of people on, about this, and uh, there's not always the sense that people are welcome to come back. I just want to go back to um, kind of the, the idea about um, sacrifice and um, being paid what you're worth. I, I think we all know that in the nonprofit world that the structure has been rough for a while, um, but there is an opportunity, and there's always an opportunity for change, restructuring, radical intervention about how that would look. And I, I feel like, and I've had this conversation at TCG, that too many times we do sacrifice so much of our personal lives, our mental space, our emotional space for the work that we do. But how is that good for the art that we create? It's not. So how do we get, and this is really something that is an action item that I'd encourage you to respond and you know write to us and say, if there was a perfect nonprofit arts organization structure, what would it look like? And I mean, really dream about this. We're artists, we work in this world, we're allowed to dream, we're allowed to think bigger and bolder. That's what we do. What would it look like? Because I think we, we cut ourselves short um, what? <laughs> by um, thinking that it's natural to be burdened. It's natural to be burned out, get some release, and come back in. There's probably a better way of doing it. What is it? You know? I mean, I mean this is actually, you're, we're on the same wavelength right now, maybe because it's, it's Brooklyn all day. Um, no, but I had conversations about, uh, about these things in Brooklyn with the Brooklyn Foundation and just how, you know, how we restructure and allocate funds. Uh, and again, I'm not as familiar with the with non-for-profit uh, funding and, and the politics around that. 
But in, uh, this came up a little bit in our conversation about when we do community-based work or teaching artist work to be more specific, you know, it's almost uh, disrespectful to be not paid for planning, to, be not get, to not get health care, to not be paid what you're worth. And I think these, you know, teaching artist work and community-based work obviously starts to funnel into audience building, into theater in general, and it works hand in hand. But yeah, that's so to answer that question, or just to sl slightly answer, to offer that opinion is, you know, there, there's that. You know, it, it's, you know if, if that's how I consider it, that's how I make my living. And, and if I don't get health care because of what I do, and I spend a lot of time off the clock building curriculum and whatnot because it's something that I believe in, you know, it, it's time for, you know, these companies to start really restructuring and how do we make that sustainable for me to keep working at that level without burning out? Yeah. Um, I also wanted to um, uh, comment on what Amelia said about welcoming people back and the idea of leaving nonprofit as someone who left a nonprofit. Um, and, and I left for a bigger, a, a bigger nonprofit, but it's a giant nonprofit. It's, you know, but it's uh, I, like, I mean, I, I, I submitted my resignation and then offered to be on the board. Uh, you know, and I was really, I was really grateful for Leilani to, um, to, to be willing to, to move in that direction, um, and you know, and and also I knew that that like, even in leaving nonprofit that that I still wanted to be involved, that that it was still a passion of mine, like it's like that by leaving I wasn't leaving theater, um, you know, because that that is such as that is still such a big part of my life. And so, and then after that, then about a year after that, I, you know, I, uh, we, we co-founded Artists of Play. And so, I mean, it's, I, <laughs> I've never really left, but, um, but, but to um, still, still be able to n not feel like I was like, I was leaving people, you know, and, and, to, and to have that opportunity to, to still be involved. Um, yes. And, and, and the, the inviting people back, uh, it, you know, like uh, David Hayward that was in Homeland and, uh, you know, the various uh, black British actors that have made it over here in America. In the, they've certainly come back to the UK and, re, you know, brought back the expertise, brought back the inspiration. Uh, you know, so like, there's something about the African-American and black British. There's quite a healthy uh, symbiosis there. And there's a thing about, there seems to be a very single-mindedness on detecting about being community-based. In the UK, a lot of the community theatres uh, opening shows in the West End, and so they have a not non-profit model partner, partnering with a for-profit model, and so you know, so uh, there's 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 some seems I don't know there's there's there seems to be quite a lot of um, s sections and I don't know I don't know whether it's I, I don't know which I'm observing and I, I I offer that as one provocation that you know you can be non-profit and still have shows on in the West End. There's multiple examples currently. Uh, and I think, you know, uh, and again in the UK, the uh, companies that work internationally for, for profit reasons or working with healthcare providers, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure there are other models here as well, but I've not heard so many of it. So I guess there's a duality and flexibility of thinking, being true to what we do, but also finding, you know, basically, you know, if I was a plumber, if I was just doing little kitchens all the time and not doing, you know, big bathrooms or doing hospitals, whatever, Maybe some people, you know, that's, that would be like, I'd, I'd like to be a plumber that will clear anyone's toilet, really. So, anyway. Okay, um, so that was awesome. Um, <laughs> I'll take that. And um, so we wanted to also uh, give the opportunity to um, uh, talk about, um, to, to assess this session um, uh, and give and start and do a list of plus and deltas. Um, plus, plus is, you know, like what worked. What was great, Delta, um, that um, moving forward, what what can change in terms of having a session like this again? Um, you know, if, if we do have the, a session like this again at OSF, then what what kind of changes could could we make to improve this? Uh, one thing is, I think, to make sure to track the conversation so you don't have to start from square one every time, you know, because I think there was a lot, there were a lot of great ideas, a lot of um, positive action steps, and to uh, put it on, I don't know, Kata's website so that it can just be tracked in some way. Oh yeah, so we will have a report that will go out to everyone. That's why I collected emails. Uh, so we will take 
We will take this. We can make it a Google Doc so that everyone can look at it, and then maybe put a link a link up on the Kata website um, to be like these. These are the actions that we are taking, um, uh, you know, to to keep connected. Who else? Uh, and, and if we can just pass around the microphone to anyone else. Um, I think what worked well for me was um, the option to have four different types of conversations and to have an extended amount of time to talk. So um, that was nice. Uh, I think for the future, I would love to just go to a work group meeting. So, so we're not starting from scratch again, but we, you know, maybe one of the workshops is, uh, yeah, let's work on su succession planning and or we, you know, whatever. So anyway, within our group, we talked a lot about how can we stop talking but actually start working. Um, there seems to be a lot to talk about infrastructural issues. I'm congregating every two to three years. I don't know. I mean, TCG is something that cr is a strategic company, a uh, constituent organization. Can CATA expand somehow to, you know, perhaps engaging, you know, core group of academics or people who are, or people who have jobs who can volunteer time to, you know, sort of, to, you know, policy making. I've been a policy maker. It, it doesn't come out of thin air. Uh, that comes, it comes out of being costed, it comes out of, you know, and certainly TCG is a very, you know, well-funded, I believe, but anyway, it's, it's anyway uh, or, uh, you know, uh, organization. So I think that there's, of course, there's these meetings in between, but there's strategic thinking, these think tanks, you know, the mainstream, they have uh, a lot of money invested into think tanks and into infrastructure support, so can CATA evolve to be more TCG-like in its function? Actually, the one thing that I say, I, um, I don't know if you guys, I won't go through the whole thing, but um, in TCG's current strategic plan, uh, we are focused on um, equity, diversity, and inclusion, uh, one of the two points, main points in our strategic plan currently. And part of the six-point plan, I won't go into all of it, is uh, around nurturing, supporting theaters of color specifically. Uh, and we got a grant from EMC Arts to start focus groups around that. Uh, and so this is something that I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what is going to be the end game on it. Uh, I think um, it's going to be the process that we're going through, but it is um, something we're deeply committed to. Wonderful. Anyone else? Oh, I would, uh, and for this session, I would love to uh, uh, somehow integrating an opportunity where the participants get to uh, create a, a genre of question, like a, a topic, I should say. Oh, that's great, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, uh, if uh, we, we can all do this while we're sitting, but if we can have like both feet on the ground and um, Thank you all so much for um, participating in this. Um, I, I've I found it really helpful, and and I've and I've uh, truly appreciated everyone's input and um, and participation in this and being open to this format. And so, um, thank you all. If we can all take a deep breath in and out, let's keep this going. Okay, we'll keep the work going. We'll stay connected. We'll have a report for you guys. We'll have next steps. We'll have assignments. We'll have working meetings. We'll have a lot of stuff. So, um, <laughs> so um, thank you all. Yay. <laughs>